from the James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the apple cart. All of a sudden, we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. Well, that's the problem, famous American physicist Michio Kaku stated a year ago. Everything is in a tizzy because of the James Webb Space Telescope. It has just occurred to us that we might need to revise every single textbook on the subject of how the cosmos came to be. A galaxy like our Milky Way, which has 100 billion stars and is billions of years old, requires an enormous amount of time to form. It takes many billions of years to create a galaxy like the Milky Way galaxy. However, six galaxies as large as the Milky Way, discovered by the James Webb Telescope, existed within 500 million years of the Big Bang. The James Webb Telescope has identified six galaxies that exist half a billion years after the Big Bang and are as large as the Milky Way itself. That is not acceptable. Primordial galaxies younger than 500 million years shouldn't exist if they are larger than our own Milky Way. We have a problem. We might need to rethink how the cosmos came to be. Something is wrong. We may have to revise our theory of the creation of the universe. Astronomers are currently experiencing a period of abundant discovery nearly two years after the James Webb Space Telescope's successful launch as the instrument continues to expand the boundaries of what can be observed. But cosmologists have also been presented with a plethora of new mysteries by these findings. Once again, the first 500 million years after the Big Bang were the focus of the telescope's observations not long ago. This time, it found galaxies that are far from babyish, much more massive and developed than was previously thought for such early epochs. Now scientists are peering into a galaxy that may be among the oldest ever found. What's more astonishing is that it already has billions of stars inside. The Hubble Space Telescope discovered this colossal celestial body as a peculiar point of light in its range of view just two years ago. Prior to directing Webb towards it, scientists were unable to fathom that this peculiar point of light was actually a gigantic galaxy teetering on the brink of time. The point of light turned out to be a primeval galaxy, far larger and older than expected, according to Webb's studies. At a redshift of ZET 9.3, or just 510 million years after the Big Bang, we can view this galaxy which is known as GZ9P3. Although we have detected several galaxies in the 350-500 mir after Big Bang era, none of them have been seen with the same magnitude as this one. These results suggest that the galaxy's stars generated at a faster and more efficient rate than previously thought in order for it to reach its present size. Not only that though, additionally, GZ9P3 has an unusual shape that may be disclosing primordial cosmic mysteries. Two bright spots inside the galaxy, which the Discovery team interprets as signs of two dense nuclei indicate to a galactic merger. That two early galaxies may have collided in the early cosmos is a very real possibility. Not only did the researchers determine the shape, age, and mass of this old galaxy, but they also focused in on its stellar population, discovering that the picture is dominated by young, brilliant stars. In the older stars of GZ9P3, the JWST allowed the research team to identify elements like as silicon, carbon, and iron. Star explosions release the heaviest element a star can make, iron, into space, filling the early cosmos with metals that will later form stars, it was also discovered that GZ9P3 included a higher number of old stars than anticipated, which could indicate that galaxies reached chemical maturity at a quicker rate than previously believed. Stars likely formed considerably earlier than previously thought and had aged sufficiently by this cosmic period, casting doubt on our present knowledge of galaxy formation. In light of these results, a new model might be needed to account for the enormous size and chemical maturity of galaxies, as well as their quick expansion into these states. Additionally, they imply that, right after the Big Bang, galaxy mergers might have been the most common cosmic event. These galaxies are more massive than was previously believed possible, 
Thus, although our present cosmological framework might not be wrong, our knowledge of the rate of galaxy creation probably requires updating. Our cosmological model is based on mathematically supported ideas and data, but there are still hints that something isn't quite right. The crisis in cosmology is a term you might be familiar with. Basically, this problem arose when various ways of calculating the expansion of the cosmos began to produce conflicting findings, and they still do, because cosmologists don't know. Recent findings from the James Webb Space Telescope have exacerbated this situation. As a result of cosmic expansion, faraway galaxies are getting ever farther from us. What we obtain when we use the Cosmic Microwave Background CMB, the light left over from when the universe was just 380,000 years old, to compute the rate of the universe's expansion is this. Then there's the other approach that compares the apparent brightness of faraway supernovae to the expected brightness. We also get the rate of cosmos expansion from this which is known as the conventional candle technique. The Hubble constant is the name given to the rate of expansion. On the other hand, the cosmological crisis is the Hubble tension, which is the difference in finding between the two approaches. However, it is no longer the exclusive crisis. Our theories are being tested to their limits by a brand new cosmic conundrum. My entire life has been devoted to refining a single hypothesis of the cosmos, and now even that notion is under scrutiny. This is exactly how science advances. Therefore, I'm all for it, Kaku remarked. Countless stars can be seen when one looks up at the sky, provided that they are not in a metropolis where light pollution is a problem. The Andromeda Galaxy, which appears as a faint dot among the stars, may possibly be visible to you. Planets, galaxies, and stars abound throughout the cosmos, which is why. Their size in relation to the cosmos is an open subject. Just how much stuff is there? Current cosmological observations disagree on the distribution of matter in the present-day cosmos, which largely causes this conundrum. The new cosmological anguish, or the enigmatic S8 tension, has emerged as a result of this. The clustering or lumpiness of matter in the universe is measured by the S8 tension. To simplify, think of space as a gigantic jigsaw puzzle with pieces of matter all over the place. The distribution and clumping mechanisms of this substance are of interest to scientists. Two metrics can be used to evaluate this. One approach is to make use of measurements made at low redshifts, such as those made possible by weak gravitational lensing, in which light from farther away is bent and distorted by the enormous gravitational pull of huge objects like galaxies and black holes. The second approach uses the CMB-based standard model of cosmology. The S8 value that comes out of these two approaches, meanwhile, isn't consistent. At its confusing core, the S8 tension is this disparity. Our next move, even with all the hypotheses, observations, and made-up things that back them up, something is obviously off. A massive cosmic simulation ran by one of the world's most powerful supercomputer helped scientists fill in the gaps. Over 50 million hours of computer time, spread out across 30,000 processors, were needed for this Flamingo project. A somewhat confusing term. Flamingo stands for Full Hydro Large Scale Structure Simulations, with all sky mapping for the interpretation of next generation observations. Even though it accounts for only 20% of the universe's mass, conventional baryonic matter is included in Flamingo, in contrast to previous simulations that solely considered dark matter. Flamingo follows the effects of both dark matter and the galactic winds caused by supernovae and supermassive black holes, which may slow the expansion of galaxies. Even while Flamingo accomplished a lot, such correctly predicting how the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies formed, it was unable to fix the S8 tension, which was its intended problem. In fact, the simulation runs counter to what Webb and other telescopes have found about the distribution of stuff in the cosmos. The present idea provides a lovely explanation for galaxy evolution, but it has a flaw. 
It suggests that the true density of galaxy clusters is 7% lower than what is actually observed. There is still a 5% excess clumping in the Flamingo simulations, no matter how detailed they are. The Hubble tension is real, according to recent observations from the Webb Space Telescope, which lend credence to the results obtained by the Hubble Space Telescope. The so-called Hubble tension is worsened because Hubble's estimates of the rate of expansion of the cosmos are correct. The basic point is that the Hubble constant, a measure of the rate of expansion of the universe, does not match up with any of the available data. While the exact source of the disparity remains a mystery, some theories have proposed that novel physical principles might be necessary to resolve the seeming paradox. Now that we can rule out measurement mistakes, the intriguing prospect that we may have misread the universe remains. There are new ideas popping up all the time. Some of them even propose doing away with dark matter altogether. How about you all take this? Leave a comment with your ideas, then hit that subscribe button.